All right, everyone, uh, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be talking about the nomenclature for alkanes. So guys, um, this will make your foundation for naming the organic molecules. And it's not just gonna be helpful for alkanes, but in later, um, uh, in later chapters, when you're gonna be studying more functional groups, or even when you study alkene or alkynes, you will find uh, this to be the most, uh, you know, foundational uh, rules for nomenclature, okay? So it's a very uh, important lecture for naming organic compounds. So guys, uh, <clears throat> why do we need nomenclature? Of course, uh, if I give you the name, you should be able to tell the formula. Uh, so for example, I tell you that uh, methane is the molecule we were talking about. You should know its formula, which is CH4. So this here is called the formula, and this here is called the name, okay? So uh, we need to learn uh, how do we give, how do we tell from the structure what its name is going to be? And if I give you the name, you will be able to tell how to draw its structure, okay? So guys, the very basic uh, idea is that we first need to learn what we call the root name for the number of carbons that we're going to have. What does that mean? Let's say I have a one carbon in a molecule. For example, CH4 is a molecule which only contains one carbon. Then the root name we use for that is meth. So the word meth means uh, you have just one carbon, okay? Now, when we say uh, methane, then what are we doing? What are we trying to say? So to the root name meth, which means that I have one carbon, what is this ane telling us? The ane is telling us that we are dealing with an alkane, okay? Now, uh, later on, you're gonna see that for alkenes, we'll be using the suffix E-N-E. -E. So this here is called the suffix. So suffix is what you put behind in the back at the end of the root name and anything that you put in front of the root name is called prefix. So uh, this here is a suffix which tells you that everything is single bonded. So when we are working with alkanes, then their name will always end with A and E and that will tell us that we are dealing with alkane and has all single bonds in that molecule, okay? So we first of all need to make a list uh, of uh, how many carbons are called what. So if you have just one carbon, you call that meth. If you have two carbons, you call that et. If you have three carbons, you call that prop. If you have four carbons, you call that bute. Okay, now when you have five carbons, these are the names you might already be familiar with. So like five is called pent, if you've done you know, the inorganic nomenclature, maybe in your previous classes, you already know that pent means five. So these first four names might be new. So these are the ones you wanna memorize first. So one carbon is called meth, two carbons is called et, three carbons are called prop, four carbons are called bute, okay? Now, uh, five carbons is pent, six carbons is hex, H-E-X, then seven carbons are called hept. They're also called sept, okay? So we're responsible for uh, knowing uh, both of these root name for seven, sept, like in September, or, uh, or hept, okay? Now, um, go back to uh, numbering eight is called opt, nine is called non, 10 is called Deck, like in decade, you have 10 years, deck is 10, okay? So um, here is here are the root names that you guys are responsible for remembering. Uh, so make notes of that, but then also try to remember all these names. As you're gonna be practice, practicing many problems, uh, these uh, you will, it'll be easy, for, uh, it'll become easy for you uh, to remember these names, okay? So now the ones that are usually are confused is this six and seven. Uh, six is hex and seven is hept. Uh, they, they, I mean, they spell a little similar like because they both start with netch, so that might confuse you. But remember that hex ends with X 
and in six you also have the x so remember it like that so hex is six hept is seven okay i hope that makes sense now guys uh what we'll do is we'll see how we can use these root names to come up with the names for the alkanes okay so now we have already learned that if we have just one carbon and we have four hydrogens we call that thing methane okay of course there's no space i'm just writing it down right now separately so meth means you got one carbon ane means they're all single bonded of course where one carbon does not actually uh, there's no option to have double or triple bond so methane is always found as an alkane because one carbon, there's no option for double, triple bond. Okay, now the next uh, is uh, is if you have if you have uh, ethane, then what is ethane supposed to to look like? So guys, ethane as the as the name et means you got two carbons. Two carbon means that you got a carbon bonded to a carbon. So that's what we know from the word ethane. Now. At telling me I have two carbon. What is the word in telling me? In is telling me that you have all single bonds. Okay. So single bonds mean carbon and carbon are single bonded. So we need to tell how many hydrogens uh, there must be then. And remember, we've learned this in the previous video that carbon is supposed to make four bonds. If it already has one bond, it's supposed to have three more. And similarly, this carbon has one already, so it needs three more. And the filler you need to add every time is hydrogen because you can add hydrogens as many as you want. So here you got, I mean, as many as needed. So um, this gives you the structure for a pain, okay? So if, for example, you were to write hexane, what would hexane be like? Hexane will be six carbons, uh, and all six carbons are single bonded, and you should be able to guess this will have how many hydrogens. The first carbon you guys know will have three hydrogens on it, and the end one will also have three hydrogens on it. And you can tell the rest of them, all of them have two bonds already, so they will just need two more. And that's where all the hydrogens will go. So you will fill these with the hydrogens as needed, okay? So this will give you your hexane uh, uh, molecule, okay? So these structures, guys, so this here is called the expanded formula. In the expanded formula, you are showing all the bonds. You are showing how the carbons are attached to each other, how the carbon and hydrogens are attached. Uh, but then we also need to know what we call the line and angle formula. This is also very, very common, guys, and we are, we are required to know this. So line and angle formula, okay? So guys, line and angle formula, what does this do? Um, we don't want to draw or write down this much every time when we draw a structure, we want like a quick structure. Uh, so what we do here is, um, is we draw lines uh, instead of you know the carbons. So what we basically do is we draw something like this, like these mountains. And what you basically are doing is each starting point and each of the connection point is basically a carbon okay so this is how you're supposed to draw a line and angle formula uh, but then this has how many carbons so i'm going to redraw this and show you what does that actually mean uh, it means that the starting point is a carbon each connection point is a carbon Okay, so where these two lines connect, that's a carbon, and where you uh, end and begin, that's also a carbon. So this has one, two, three, four, five carbons. Of course, you don't when it, when you're drawing line and angle formula, you don't show the carbons because that defeats the purpose. Uh, we just want to make it as simple as possible and as quickly we can draw something. So when you draw this type of structure, you're already saying that you have uh, um, five carbons in there. Okay, you are of course not showing the hydrogens, but again, we should know in the back of in our head that there are hydrogens here. Uh, each of the middle ones have two hydrogens, the one at the end had three hydrogens. We should know that, right? So we got five carbons here and then all of them have hydrogens. So this here, guys, since you have five carbons, this means that the structure that you guys have is pentane. Remember, when you have five carbons, one, two, three, four, five, five means pent. 
So the word for five is pent. So you use that root name. And since you're dealing with alkane, you use that A and E as your suffix. Okay. So that's where you got the name pentane from. Okay. All right. Now, uh, the things uh, change when you don't have simple structures like these. Uh, this, you know, is, is a very simple structure where there's no branching happening, okay? But we do come across molecules uh, which have branching in them, okay? So we need to understand what does that basically mean, okay? So guys, you could have, you could have an alkane uh, where the carbons are attached like this, but then somewhere in the middle, you see a new attachment like that, okay? So now what do we do in these cases? So in these cases, so we call these molecules, the molecules that have branching in them. You see, this was the straight chain, but then there was this carbon. Do you see again, every end is a carbon. So if I, if I show you explicitly where the carbons are sitting, then this is what they're looking like there is a carbon sitting here. So I've got these carbons in the main chain, which we also call the parent chain. So guys, the parent chain is considered the main chain, the longest chain in a molecule. Uh, but then there are carbons that are attached to them from outside. Think, of, think like that, okay? So this carbon, which has been attached out from outside onto the main chain, this right here, guys, is called substituent. Why the word substituent? So guys, the word substituent means something has been replaced. So um, what happened here, this carbon, remember, originally is making two bonds here with two carbons, and it must have got two hydrogens. One of those hydrogens has been substituted by this carbon. So that hydrogen was removed and carbon was attached. And that's why we use the term substituent for this carbon, okay? Now, you see this is the main chain of the carbon. So let me actually, uh, let me highlight that here. So the main chain, which is this portion here, this portion, the main chain is considered your, this is the parent chain, okay? The main chain. This chain is supposed to be the longest chain. Okay, now uh, this right here is the substituent. Now, we need to learn how to name these molecules, okay? Because if I simply had a straight chain, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, if I had seven carbons in the straight chain, I would have simply just called it, uh, if I have seven carbons, I would have simply called it heptane or septane. Heptane is more commonly used. Uh, but we should be aware that sept can also be used. So heptane is the is the name that is that is used. Okay, now that's good. But the thing is that here we have this extra carbon, and we need to include that information in in our name. Okay, so uh, what we need to do here, guys, we will break down our name into the last name and first name. Okay, technically, of course, there is no such thing like that in 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 the nomenclature. Um, so uh, the, the nomenclature uh, uh, does not have a thing like first and last name, but what we are going to be doing is we're going to be splitting this molecule into first and last name, okay? So this red part, the main parent chain, since this has um, seven carbons, I'm going to simply call that heptane, and this forms our last name, okay? Now there's a name we're supposed to put here in the front, and this will give us the information about the substituent, okay? Now, what substituent do we have? We have one carbon substituent. The substituent itself is just one carbon, okay? So when your substituent is, is one carbon long, you see for one carbon, the word that you use, the root name that you use is met. So that's the word you use here. The root name is met, but the suffix we add here for substituent is YL, okay? We call these groups alkyl groups. So guys, any substituent, so substituents, the name for them go by alkyl. So at the end for them, 
we're supposed to add YL. This is just to help us differentiate uh, substituent from the main chain, okay? We don't want to call one carbon, this one carbon methane, okay? Because we don't want to confuse uh, who is reading that name to confuse that methane being the main chain, it's not. Okay, so we need a substituent different suffix and that's why we have this YL, okay? So um, we have a methyl sitting here, okay? So let me erase the information that we don't need for right now. So let me erase this stuff here. So um, what we have done here is this part right here is methyl. Okay, and the red part here is heptane. We need to bring these two words together to get the final name. So what I'll do here is I'll add the word methyl heptane. Okay, so this is the name for this molecule, but there's one thing which is missing here. And what is that one thing? If you guys notice from this name, I can tell that I have heptane as the main chain. So I'm gonna have seven carbons in the main chain and then one carbon will be here as a substituent, right? But I am not telling you from this uh, name, methyl heptane, that where is this methyl sitting? Because this methyl could have been sitting you know, on this carbon, it could have been sitting on this carbon here, right? It could be sitting on the second carbon here. So, so we need to tell uh, in the name, where is the substituent sitting? Okay, so what we need to do here, guys, we need to number the main chain. And this is very important, guys. This can sometimes uh, confuse us, okay? So what we need to learn here is how to name, how to number the main chain, okay? So our main chain has seven carbons. The way you number, so when it comes to numbering the main chain, or the parent chain, which is the longest chain, we need to follow a rule. And that rule is to give your branch point, okay, the smallest number possible. Okay, so the way we want to number this main chain is so that our branch point, what is branch point guys? You see this carbon, this is where the branching is happening. This is where the substituent is attached. This one carbon should get the smallest number. So I can, there are two options for us to, to number and only one of them is correct. So I can start numbering here, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's one option, right? So I can, I can number it from left to the right. The second option is that I number this from right to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So if you notice something guys, if I start numbering from the left-hand side, this black numbering, if I start from the left-hand side, my branch point carbon gets this number three. Okay, it gets the number three. But in, if I start numbering from the right-hand side, the green numbering, then I get number five for my branch point carbon. So which numbering do you pick, the black or the green one? Do you pick the left one or do you pick the right-hand side one? You pick the one from the left-hand side because this gives your branch point or your substituent the smallest number, okay, which is three. So what are you gonna do here is you will ignore the numbering from the right to the left. You will go by the numbering from the left to the right. So this is the correct numbering. So how are you gonna answer this case? So what you'll do at the end is you will say, okay, it's methyl heptane, but this methyl is sitting on carbon number three. So I need to include here that methyl is sitting on carbon number three. One thing to pay attention to is whenever you have a number and a name next to each other, we must put a dash, okay? So it's three methyl heptane, um, and that's the final answer, okay? So guys, very, very important to, to learn the skill of how to find the longest chain, first of all, uh, separate out the substituents, 
and then give your parent chain the numbering. And how you number the main chain is very, very important. And that is what we'll need practice. So you need to always number uh, your longest chain in such a way that your branch point where the substituent is sitting, it should get the smallest number, okay? All right, so what we'll do is we'll do some more examples. And as we do more examples, we'll also learn some uh, extra uh, rules as well, okay? All right, so uh, continuing um, uh, with, with more examples, what we'll do, let's, let's try this out. So let's take a molecule which looks somewhat like this. And it has, for instance, it looks somewhat like this, okay? All right, now, for a molecule like this, what should we do? Look for the very first rule, the very first step is to find the parent chain. So guys, whenever you're doing nomenclature, so whenever you're trying to name a molecule, the first rule is to find the parent chain, which is also called the longest chain. Now, how will you find the longest chain? So if I look for, for the longest chain here, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's one of the options. You always want to check not only, uh, when we say longest, we don't mean the straight chain, okay? So uh, uh, we will see examples where the straight chain might not be the longest. So you have to be more creative and, and look around. So let's see, one, two, three. So I go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's one option, right? So seven carbons. The second option is I go this way, one, two, three, four, five, six. Now this gives me six carbons, which is not as long as seven carbons. So that, that's not the parent chain. Uh, also, let's try from the other side, or actually let's start coming from here. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's also six, so that's also not good. So in this case, uh, the fact is that we are getting the longest chain to be, you know, uh, to be this, um, I'm sorry, let me redo that. So, so this, this chain that you're finding happens to be, oops. Uh, so this chain here happens to be the longest chain. Now the point is uh, um, how many carbons do we have first of all? So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So we've got seven carbons in the main chain. So of course this is going to be heptane because seven carbons is is hept and it's all alkane, all single bonded, so heptane. The point is now uh, the branching, right? The substituent. So what is our substituent? Our substituent this time, how long is the substituent? In the previous example, we saw that the substituent was just one carbon, it was metal. In this case, is it the same? No, it's not. This time, our substituent is actually two carbons, right? So a carbon sitting here and a carbon sitting here. Right, so a different uh, substituent this time. Okay, now, um, how does our numbering look this time? Um, so, uh, okay, first of all, let's call this, let, let's figure this out first. So we did seven carbons, we call that heptane, so we're done with that. Now I look at two carbons, but these two carbons, um, what are two carbons called? The root name for two carbons is et, right? Now, um, if you have et, and tell me what are we supposed to put here in the back? Since you have a substituent, pause the video for a second. Tell me what should I put here in the back? Should I be, should I be putting um, ethane or should this be ethyl? Okay, I hope you guys have the answer. So guys, since this is a substituent, we're supposed to add YL in the back. So this is ethyl, okay? So we got, we, we, got, we got the names already. We got that this part is ethyl, and we got that this portion, the big one, is heptane. What we need to check is the numbering that we just did in the red, is that right or not, okay? And how do you decide that? Remember from the previous rule, uh, the, uh, the, long, the, the substituent or the branch point should get the smallest number possible. So if I go from left, to the right, it gets four. If I start from the right and I go left, notice this time, it actually, uh, if you number from this side, one, two, three, 
or as you see, both sides are getting four and four. So in this case, it actually does not make any difference which side do you number from, okay? So this case, uh, your, your branching is happening at position number four. So this guy uh, uh, is, is four ethyl, right? So it's four dash ethyl heptane, okay? I hope that makes sense, okay?